All right, I've started a fringe. It's a flat, wide fringe. It's the uh, material of the coat, which is a, a Hudson Bay, Bay blanket. And uh, I've been adding it to the uh, seam of the sleeve and the uh, main body of the coat. Uh, what I do is I run the clay through my pasta machine to get an exact same thickness and then I'm just trying to make it so that uh, they can make a mold of this somehow without uh, running into problems but yet still keep the integrity of the design of the coat time to play with some clay Now the clay has to be a certain coolness. It can't be completely soft. It's got to be uh, somewhat cool. So anyway, it has to be a certain coolness. And over time you learn where that borderline of coolness is to run it through the pasta machine so it doesn't bubble up or stick to the rollers. Uh, too soft, it'll do that. Uh, too cold, you can't roll it. So it's got to be in between. So I'm going to put this through the pasta machine and uh, be right back. Now what I do is I take the uh, clay that's come through the pasta machine and I fold it over to double its thickness so that uh, it's got some thickness to it. And then I... It's minus 11 outside right now with a wind chill. So it's a little cold in the studio. <laughs> it's a titch. Now I'm measuring each one for three inches. And I'm using the width of my ruler as the width for each one of the uh, fringes. The one thing I forgot to do was to put texture in each of these uh, blanket pieces that make up the uh, fringe I've got to have the same texture I have on the uh, coat so that's what I'm going to be doing is putting texture into the uh, clay I took all the fringe off that I had just added and uh, redoing this part here so that I've got both sides covered and I'm doing it in a curved sort of uh, fluid move instead of straight up and down with the uh, tool to give it kind of a sculptural quality to the clay because some of these will be turned outward I've got to do with the underside as well. All right, I'll be back when I get all this done. All right, I'm going to start adding this back on again. Now that I've got uh, both sides textured. Thank you. 
just have to even out the uh, upper seam and I'll do that when I get around to that. This side won't be as affected by the wind as that other side was. around to the back side of the coat it will be affected so fringe right there. Give some of the fringe a little character. put a roll of clay as a seam. Now I just got to put the uh, some part. Time to put the seam on the coat. Now let's do the other side. Now a lot of the uh, seam on this side is covered by the uh, the flaps or the uh, tassels. I think that's as far as I'm going to go on this piece for now until I get something uh, in some interest in it uh, or I want to come back and revisit it uh, at a later date or if I want to put it into a gallery and I want to get it to a finer uh, finish before doing that 
but for now i think this is it for on this piece and i'll i'm going to take tomorrow off not sure exactly what i need to do i need to probably put this aside for now and uh, come back and work on the uh the horses maybe friday uh, try to get the mane of the horse and horses and the uh, tails uh, done and finish that piece up. All right. Good night, everybody. See you next time. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.